Hey guys, Lord Naren White here, the Holy Ghost, the one true God. Back with you with the next video in my Daily Dire series. As usual, before I discuss what I have achieved since yesterday's Daily Dire video, I want to read you a chapter from the Bible. Today it will be the fifth book of Moses called Deuteronomy, chapter 13. If there arise among you a prophet, or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you, to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God, and fear him, and keep his commandments, and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him, and cleave unto him. And that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams, shall be put to death, because he hath spoken to turn away, turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt, and redeemed you out of the house of bondage, to thrust thee out of the way, uh, which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shalt thine eye pity him, neither shalt thou spare him, neither shalt thou conceal him, but thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people. And thou shalt stone him with stones that he die, because he hath sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And all Israel shall hear and fear, and shall do no more any such wickedness as this is among you. If thou shalt hear say in one of thy cities which the Lord thy God hath given thee to dwell there, saying, Certain men, the children of Belial, are gone out from among you, and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their city, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which ye have not known. Then shalt thou inquire, and make search, and ask diligently, and, behold, if it be truth and the thing is certain that such abomination is wrought among you. Thou shalt surely smite the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword, destroying it utterly, and all that is therein, and the cattle thereof with the edge of the sword. And thou shalt gather all the spoil of it into the midst of the street thereof, and shalt burn with the fire, burn with fire the city, and all the spoil thereof every whit. For the Lord thy God, and it shall be an heap for ever, it shall not be built again. And there shall cleave not of the cursed thing to thine hand, that the Lord may turn from the fierceness of his anger, and shew thee mercy, and have compassion upon thee, and multiply thee as he hath sworn unto thy fathers. When thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep all his commandments which I command thee this day, to do that which is right in the eyes of the Lord thy God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So one of the ideas of the commandments is definitely strict forbiddance of idol worship. Do I necessarily agree, of course, with the passage in Deuteronomy 13, 9, but thou shalt surely kill him, thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people? No. I, I don't believe so. Um, I want to give you a quote, though, as explaining why this punishment, I believe, is justified by the Lord. And the quote comes from the book after Joshua, Judges. And in Judges 7-7, seven, seven, so Judges 7-6 seven, and 7-7, seven, seven, And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were three hundred men, but all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, by the three hundred men that lapped, 
will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand, and let all the other people go every man unto his place. So the idea here being, let's first address the idea before I look for the next part. The Lord wants the 300 men who lap and drink the water to be the only men who fight alongside uh, Gideon the son of Joash and Lord Naren White fighting against the Midianites. And he wants this because of two reasons. First and foremost, in the passage here in 7.3, now first and foremost, now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people saying whosoever is fearful and afraid let him return and depart early from mount gilead and there returned of the people twenty and two thousand and there remained ten thousand he doesn't want any of the people who are afraid of battle because what ends up happening if you look at battles historically when you have some xyz amount of men and then suddenly some of them start running Everything gets thrown into array, and very rarely does the line hold, and they win that battle once people start fleeing. So, having the men there who want to fight first and foremost is key. And then, the next passage I want to read is actually in Judges 7 2. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me. The Lord saying to Gideon, again, and the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. So he will not help them. Why? Lest the Lord, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. How beautiful is that? And I want to connect that with the idol worship. Lord God Jehovah is the one true God. He is perfect. He is all powerful. He is omnipotent. He is omniscient. He is omnipresent. He is God. And he wants the only men who fight there to be the ones who drink from that water, who lap from who who lap lappeth from that water, because they can be trusted to fight. They can be trusted to fight for the Lord their God. And the point I am making from all of that is that unity is why is why I believe that emphasis on unity, that strict emphasis on unity is why I believe these punishments, like killing someone who goes to follow another god, is is acceptable. Oh, excuse me, I should say, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh, thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shall thine eye pity him, neither shall thou be spared. So again, if thy brother, or the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or thy wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, let us go, namely of the gods, thou shalt not consent them, thou shalt surely kill them. Why? Because the Lord God knows that one bad bushel can ruin the crop. And I'm quoting Naren Jalcos scripture there. Does Naren Jalcosism have any punishment like this? Absolutely not. There is no punishment like this. And it's really not a relevant comparison though. First and foremost, why? Not, not first and foremost, why? The reason being why is Lord Naren White, the Holy Ghost, the one true God is immortal. And I will be here forever, which means with my divine power, I am capable of molding people from, you know, men and women, most of which will probably be of level seven from childhood through adulthood, through old age, all the way, God willing to shepherd them into the kingdom of God in their life. And they will have to fight for it. And I will provide that blueprint from them. I will. That is my vision. I will mold them in my holy fire. I will care for them in this way. I can make sure that the thought of sin doesn't even come in their mind. And that is my, that is me, that is Lord Naren White, the Spirit of God, the Lion of God. And so each of us, each member of the Trinity has a different way. But I want to bring that idea whole, full circle because I also quote that scripture very early in the chapter of my gospel. In fact, just chapter 2, I quote that very scripture in, in the book of Judges chapter 7 of Gideon the son of Joash and fighting against the Midianites with these 300 men because I can trust those men. And trust is one of the most important things in, uh, uh, in this world because I often preach this. Nair Angelicals, of course, there's only one at this point, but I, I am 
sowing that good goodwill that Naranjalikos can be trusted to follow the law and do the right thing and under the law to do the right thing at the right time which is to work with sincerity and focus why do I keep saying this it's not just to so to sow it in my own mind but because at the end of the day you can do the right thing at the right time for 10,000 days and if one day you, you, you somehow goof you have destroyed all the trust and you'll have to start all over So not only is it better to never destroy the trust, it's most important to focus on yourself that you don't go astray, which is why I have that quote, one bad bushel can ruin the crop. And of course, I do disagree on many things with my Heavenly Father in terms of, I don't believe in circumcision. I don't believe in, you know, just as Jesus Christ, he doesn't stone the adulterer. I would not stone the adulterer either. Uh, what's another example? I also believe that if you need to work on the Sabbath, it's okay. Things like this. So I do disagree and to each their own, of course. And that's why I'm finally getting a chance now as the Holy Spirit of God to create my own faith. And so with that, I'll go ahead and end the Bible reading there for today and transition over now to what I have achieved since yesterday's Daily Diary video. Since yesterday's Daily Diary video, I worked my software developer job and I created, uploaded, and scheduled this Daily Diary video for 8-10-22. And with no further achievements since yesterday's Daily Diary video, I want to say thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe, as it greatly helps the channel. Light be with you all. Take care, and thanks again.